We have opened the door to several uh, terms, microscopic terms we have used, uh, terms used in histopathology to describe tumors. So let's talk about them a little bit more. Uh, the word pleomorphism, as it appears uh, in pathology or on a pathology report, simply means that there's a lot of variation in cell size and cell shape. So if all cells in a tissue are generally about the same size, pleomorphic uh, cells means there's a lot of variation, especially a lot of big cells, but as also smaller cells. And if the nuclei are normally rather spherical, perhaps they are more bumpy shaped or oval shaped. So pleomorphism refers chiefly to nuclei rather than cells. So pleomorphism in tumors means the tumor cell nuclei have a lot of variation in size and shape. The second most commonly used word to describe tumors is hyperchromasia. And that refers to the fact that in malignancy, the nucleus uh, takes up the uh, nuclear uh, affinity dyes. In other words, hematoxylin more than average. So tumor cells are generally darker than normal cells or more hematoxylin nophilic. Uh, and not only are they darker, but because we said the nuclei are generally larger, you therefore have a higher nuclear cytoplasmic ratio. Remember, it's the nucleus that enlarges often when malignancy or malignant transformation occurs. So if the nucleus enlarges, but the cytoplasm stays the same size, then you would have a high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio. This is very important when we look at uh, exfoliated cells and examine them perhaps like on a pap smear. And often the distribution of chromatin within the nucleus is not as uniform in a malignant cell as an enormous cell. So often they'll talk about chromatin clumping or non-homogeneity of the uh, hematoxylin in the enlarged nucleus. And uh, often a cell may have uh, zero or perhaps one or perhaps more than one or two nucleoli normally, but anaplastic cells generally have more prominent nucleoli. Sometimes these are called nucleoli, but what they really are are clumps of chromatin. Because from light microscopy, you really can't tell the difference, and probably not even from electron microscopy. The other common thing that is used to describe tumor cells is the mitoses. So if a normal tissue, let's say, has about one mitosis per 10 high power fields, let's say that you're seeing two or three or five or six or 10, that means the tissue or the cells are growing faster, so visibly that would be seen as a high mitotic rate. And sometimes uh, the mitoses may be in places where you normally don't see uh, cell proliferation. Another feature is that if you see a mitosis in which the chromosomes are going off in three or four different directions rather than two, which is what basic biology tells you. We call that a multipolar or a tripolar mitosis. And uh, any mitosis which goes off in more than two directions is almost certainly a malignant cell. I really can't think of any benign conditions. Another uh, concept in anaplasia or uh, malignant cellular features is loss of polarity. Let's say, for example, in many uh, columnar-lined epithelial surfaces, the uh, nucleus is more towards the base or the basement membrane or basal lamina side of the cell and not towards the apex of the cell. Well, in anaplastic uh, glands, let's say, the nuclei may not uh, stay in that general polarization area. They may go out haphazardly towards the apex as well. Uh, this is a really good example of anaplasia. Why should we talk about it? We got a great picture here. Notice that these nuclei are bigger than they should be and they are darker than they should be. Now it's hard to really show the normal here because 
This is all tumor, but you see this large nucleus with the big nucleus? Do you see this large nucleus? Do you see this large one with a giant, perhaps even more than one nucleus? This is about, oh, five, six, ten, twenty times more than a nucleus should be. And look how much darker it is, too. It's not taking up the stain uniformly like you should see here, but it's darker. So. Uh, we went through that whole list of adjectives uh, that we use to describe tumor cells, but let's just say if the only two that you remember are pleomorphism and, and, and uh, hyperchromasia, then that's about all you'll ever see on the pathology report often. Now, let's say that tumor cells do not have, frankly, malignant or anaplastic features. But let's say we suspect that they are going to have uh, a malignant feature. This is the whole gray zone between benign and malignant called dysplasia. Dysplasia means abnormal growth. It's part of the malignant transformation process. It may take years. It may take months. It may take weeks. But in dysplasia, some of the features that we just talked about are present, but they are not convincingly present to call it a frank anaplasia. Dysplasia may develop into malignancy. It often does, but it may not develop into malignancy. And that's anywhere in the body. And of course, the uterine cerv and cervical polyps are the most widely studied because that's what we see the most in surgical pathology. And just like we talked about uh, malignant features as being well, moderate, or poor, you can also talk about dysplasia or the pre-malignant process as being low-grade or high-grade. So low-grade dysplasia will look only slightly abnormal. It may have mild pleomorphism. It have, may have mild hyperchromasia. But high-grade dysplasia may have extreme pleomorphism or extreme hyperchromasia. And if you want to put some little grades in between that, like moderate, or use a whole bunch of acronyms that have been introduced over the generations, you could do that as well. But instead, let's do something smart, and let's take a look at the picture. This is a uterine cervix. This is the squamous portion of a uterine cervix. Now, normally, in a normal uterine cervix, you have more basaloid or columnar looking cells towards the surface, and they generally get uh, flatter, both nucleus and cytoplasm, or more squamous appearing as you get towards the surface. But in here, you can see that some darker cells, uh, bigger cells, are still way out towards the surface. Notice this is only in the surface epithelium, and it does not involve this underlying gland, but it may involve this underlying gland. If it's a gland, it may just be part of this epithelium here. I don't know. But this is what we call severe dysplasia. There's no doubt about it. If the severe dysplasia looks like it almost certainly is cancerous, in other words, there's no attempt at maturation in most of these uh, layers here. Then you can call it carcinoma in situ. Now, the definition of carcinoma in situ is that it has not infiltrated or invaded the basement membrane yet. It may have gone to some of these glands, but it has not infiltrated the basement membrane, and that's why it's called in situ. Now, if you think that severe dysplasia, like we saw here, is, looks a lot like carcinoma in situ, don't worry. It's all given the same classification. It's called CIN3. So that's the way we have uh, solved our problem of uh, agonizing whether something is severely dysplastic or, frankly, malignant in situ, is to give it the same classification. So uh, I think we just gave you a lot of heavy stuff. Uh, we'll continue uh, with the next group uh, in the next uh, 10 minutes. Thank you very much.